White House attorney Eric Hirschman testified that the next day, January 7th, he received a call from Dr. Eastman. Here is Mr. Hirschman's account of that call. The day after, uh, Eastman, I don't remember why he called me, He's in a, or he texted me or called me, wanted to talk with me, and he said he couldn't reach others. And he started to ask me about something dealing with Georgia and preserving something potentially for appeal. Uh, and I said to him, are you out of your effing mind? Right? I said, I said, I only want to hear two words coming out of your mouth for now on. Orderly transition. And I screamed and said, I don't want to hear any other effing words coming out of your mouth, no matter what, other than orderly transition. Repeat those words to me. And I screamed another second. Eventually, he said, orderly transition. I said, good, John. Now I'm going to give you the best free legal advice you're ever getting in your life. Get a great F in criminal defense lawyer. You're going to need it. And then I hung up on him. In fact, just a few days later, Dr. Eastman emailed Rudy Giuliani and requested that he be included on a list of potential recipients of a presidential pardon. Dr. Eastman's email stated, quote, I've decided that I should be on the pardon list if that is still in the works. Dr. Eastman did not receive his presidential pardon. So let's see what Dr. Eastman did as a result when he was deposed by this committee. I assert my Fifth Amendment right against uh, being compelled to be a witness against myself. Did the Trump legal team ask you to prepare a memorandum regarding the vice president's role in the counting of electoral votes at the joint session of Congress on January 6, 2020? Yeah. Dr. Eastman, did you advise the president of the United States that the vice president could reject electors from seven states and declare that the president had been reelected? Yeah. Dr. Eastman, the first sentence of the memo starts off by saying seven states have transmitted dual slates of electors to the president of the Senate. Is that statement in this memo true? Yep. Did President Trump authorize you to discuss publicly your January 4th, 2021 conversation with him? Yep. Uh, our so is it your position that you can discuss in the media direct conversations you had with the President of the United States, but you will not discuss those same conversations with this committee? Fifth. Dr. Eastman pled the fifth a hundred times. Finally, let's hear from a federal court judge, the only one to date who has opined on whether the President was involved in criminal activity. Page 36 of Judge Carter's ruling says, Quote, based on the evidence, the court finds it more likely than not that, the pres that President Trump corruptly attempted to obstruct the joint session of Congress on January 6, 2021. Page 40 of the ruling says, quote, based on the evidence, the court finds that it is more likely than not that President Trump and Dr. Eastman dishonestly conspired to obstruct the joint session of Congress on January 6, 2021. In page 44, Dr. Eastman and President Trump launched a campaign to overturn a democratic election, an action unprecedented in American history. Their campaign was not confined to the ivory tower. It was a coup in search of a legal theory. Mr. Jacob, what would have happened to our democracy if Vice President Pence had gone along with this plan and certified Donald Trump as the winner? of the 2020 election? So there would have been short-term and long-term effects. The short-term I previously described, a constitutional jump ball situation, political chaos in Washington, lawsuits, um, and who knows what happening in the streets. And you would have had the Vice President of the United States having declared um, that the outcomes of these state elections were incorrect. Um, so for all of those reasons, um, there would have been significant short-term consequences. But in the long term, 
um, we would have established a situation where a vice president would have asserted that one person could have the authority to determine the outcome of an election, which is antithetical to everything in our democracy, is antithetical to the rule of law. And so it would have been um, uh, significant impacts, both in the short and the long term. Judge Ludig, in the statement you released earlier today, you wrote that the efforts by President Trump to overturn the 2020 election were, quote, the most reckless, insidious, and calamitous failures in both legal and political judgment in American history. What did you mean by that? Exactly what I said, Congressman. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Mr. Jacob. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Gentlemen. I'm, so, I'm sorry, Mr. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, I want that back. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, this was an informative hearing, a powerful hearing. I'm grateful for your leadership and the leadership of the distinguished vice chair. Donald Trump knew he lost the 2020 election, but he could not bring himself to participate in the peaceful transfer of power. So he latched on to a scheme that once again, he knew was illegal. And when the vice president refused to go along with it, he unleashed a violent mob against him. When we began, I asked, how we got to this place. And I think the answer to that question starts with the fact that people in positions of power put their political party before their country. It cannot be allowed to continue. I'll yield back now, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Thank you very much. Without objection, the chair recognizes the gentlewoman from Wyoming, Ms. Cheney, for a closing statement. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you to my colleague, Representative Aguilar, and thank you very much uh, to our witnesses today, Mr. Jacob and Judge Ludig. Thank you for, for being here with us. Um, we have seen so far in, in our hearings that President Trump knew that his claims of a stolen election were false. You have seen that he knew that Mike Pence could not legally refuse to count electoral votes. And you have seen what, Mike, what President Trump did to pressure Mike Pence into taking illegal action. Over the course of our next hearings, you will see information about President Trump's efforts, John Eastman efforts, the Trump legal team's efforts to apply pressure to Republican state legislatures, state officials, and others. Judge Carter has recently written, quote, Dr. Eastman's actions in these few weeks indicate that his and President Trump's pressure campaign to stop the electoral count did not end with Vice President Pence. It targeted every tier of federal and state elected officials. We will examine all of those threats, and we will examine the Trump team's determination to transmit materially false electoral slates from multiple states to officials of the executive and legislative branches of our government. We will examine the pressures put on state legislatures to convene, to reverse lawful election results. An honorable man receiving the information and advice that Mr. Trump received from his campaign experts and his staff, a man who loved his country more than himself, would have conceded this election. Indeed, we know that a number of President Trump's closest aides urged him to do so. This committee will address all of these issues in greater detail in the coming weeks. Mr. Chairman, I yield back.